What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me, but I just got home off of an early morning flight, right? First thing through the door, I want to see my family. I love my family. You know, I'm a family man. I'm an advocate for families, right? Second thing, I got to get that hot shower because I got to throw the threads on. The threads make me feel like a million bucks. But the third thing through my mind and all throughout the trip is that I got to have that Tej pack. Tej makes my life uncomplicated. It's uncomplicated skincare for men. The first way that I started specifically was their level one system. It's a daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and grime on your skin. Two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. Here's the thing. My favorite part about Teach Henley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make in the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin for men uncomplicated. In addition to amazing skin, members of Teach Henley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, the ability to customize your box, exclusive monthly deals, you can pause and cancel at any time, and you get free shipping. And because Teach Henley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers an amazing deal, right? Just click the first link in the description and you get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. It's an amazing deal. You got to get started today. You're not out here trying to look like a dusty dusty. And if you travel as much as I do, which I'm sure most people don't, but you know me, I'm pushing my bag chasers in order to be in the top 5%, top 10%, top 1%. We got to make our lives uncomplicated and Teach Henley is no better product. You got to look good. You got to smell good. And, and you can't be looking like a dusty dusty. Make sure you get started today. Click the link in the description. Get that Teach pack. Fill the Teach, my friends. What's going on? Sand time from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Uh, live from Las Vegas again. Uh, looking out at Allegiant Stadium. Um, life is absolutely awesome. Life is great. Uh, I have no complaints whatsoever. Let me go ahead and check into the chat and see what the word is out here in the streets. So we got our first super chat of the day. Shout out to uh, Poetic Hands is in the building. Says, good morning, Anton. I just want to express my gratitude uh, for all the game you give. By far the best podcast out. I agree. First and foremost, I appreciate you for the fireball. Uh, but I absolutely agree. I think that I do have the best live stream morning show podcast uh, for people that are interested in being entertained and getting the game at the same time. So uh, thank you for that super chat. Uh, shout out to my girl Q is in the building, says, oh, Lord, here we go. Uh, cool James says, beard is looking good, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Now, it is some gray in here, and I do regularly get the gray serviced, uh, but I try to keep it black. I'm not quite ready to be zaddy yet. You know what I'm saying? What up, Mo Salmon? Uh, I appreciate you, big dog. Shout out to everybody in the chat. I can't tap into everybody uh, because I absolutely want to uh, get it popping, but we working. We're not going to talk about it. We working. Um, I want to get started with the show because I want to give you all my thoughts and I'm going to be reading super chats throughout the show. So let's go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, first and foremost, I'd love for you guys to hit a like for the YouTube algorithm uh, or a dislike because I know that I got a dislike before I even got the show started and I appreciate the dislikes just as much as the likes. Uh, it all works the same in a YouTube algorithm, and you're very much appreciated. Um, but if you can hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Uh, in addition to that, tap into the Patreon. I just dropped another video yesterday. Now, uh, for those of you that are bag chasers and a part of the Patreon, you know that we got the Patreon meetup coming up soon. Uh, Q is on my head. Rita is on my head about making sure that I update y'all inside of the Patreon about the venue. Uh, I had to switch what I thought was originally the venue simply because uh, it is a lot of people that is going to be attending what it is that we got going on in Dallas. So uh, I will be updating that today slash tomorrow morning before the live stream, hopefully, um, so that you guys can be updated on what's going on in Dallas. Uh, in addition to that, I dropped the video, an exclusive never, be seen, never before seen footage will not be released in its entirety on YouTube. Uh, 
an exclusive with Charleston White and his brother, Kev. Now, I've had an opportunity to have extensive conversations with Kev. Kev just got home from doing a 31-year bid inside of the prison system. Uh, he got locked up when he was 17 years old. Uh, and it was a mind-boggling, nobody has ever been interviewed uh, or nobody has ever interviewed Kev White. Uh, and I thought that it was a crazy interview. So if you are a bag chaser and you're interested uh, in the exclusives that we do not make available to uh, the general public, if you, you, you're you interested in the uncensored exclusives that you can only get on Patreon in addition to all of the game about uh, how it is that you can level up in your business, what you should invest in, how you can make more money from social media, uh, the finesse of how I easily make an additional uh, up to $1 million a year that has nothing to do with content creation, YouTube, real estate, any of that other type of stuff. If you're looking for that type of information broken down from a C student's perspective, and then you also want to get the, the meetups that we're going to do in person, and we do a meetup almost every single month, uh, tap into the Patreon. The link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, and if you are a bag chaser and a Patreon member and you're enjoying the content and you want to expand with your network, even outside of meeting people in person, Make sure you tap into the Discord. That link to the Discord is in the description of any of the most recent videos, all right? So now that we got the housekeeping out of the way, uh, let me also read a few more Super Chat self -made. Forever says, Disney bag fumbled on the new Spider-Man movie. Look what they did. I'm going to have to tap into that. Let me write that down real quick. Put that in my notes. Disney fumble in the bag on the new Spider-Man movie? I have to check that out. Uh, shout out to Self Made Forever for the 10 ball. Uh, one guapo Lo says, I got beats tap in. Send them to me. My email, antondaniels413 at gmail.com. Thank you for the super chat. JP, the businessman, said, I appreciate this great content. AD, you are cooking. Shouts out to the bag chasers. Thank you, JP, the businessman, for the 10 ball and always supporting the platform. Get the likes up. It's going to be an interesting show today. But before we get started, right? Because uh, we want to address social issues. We want to address the bag talk. Uh, this is the Millionaire Morning Show, so you guys know that everything comes back down to the money. Um, shout out to my dog, Kojak. Q did a phenomenal show last night on the, on, on Anton Daniels' channel. Check that out. Shout out to my dog, Quentin. I appreciate you. Uh, shout out to everybody. Peter Investor, Treese Westmoreland, Brock, everybody. I love y'all. I absolutely love y'all. Um... I'm largely unfamiliar, especially now. I'm largely unfamiliar with what's going on in these YouTube streets because I've insulated myself based off of the recommendation of those that are around me of how it is that I'm supposed to move. So I have to give a large appreciation. If y'all see me shouting Q out, Island Girl Q, and make sure y'all subscribe to her channel. Uh, go to Island Girl Q and subscribe to her channel. Um... Somebody said that camera cop quality is crazy. S. Chanel, you know what I record on? You know what I'm live streaming on? An iPhone, iPhone, uh, iPhone 14 Pro. I shoot all of my content on iPhones unless I'm in a studio, and then I shoot it on that. And so a lot of people be thinking that uh, they need to spend a whole lot of money getting all of these lights and equipment. I got to get this crazy camera. You ain't got to do all of that. I'm going to break this down even more inside of the Patreon. But let me get away from that. Let me go back to my my um, my original point. If you see me shouting out people like Island Girl Q regularly, it's because she's an asset to me, right? Q is more than a friend. Logic is more than a friend. Rita is more than my wife, right? And we are so close and so connected that people will even throw shots and say dumb shit like, she must be his second wife. If that's what y'all want to label her, I'm cool with that because I think that Q would make a phenomenal first wife for any man that would be interested in making sure. Well, I'm not going to talk about her dating life because Q has already got her stuff sorted out. Just because she don't talk about the shit on the Internet don't mean that she ain't already got her stuff together. And as a matter of fact, I try to pour into her and tell her stuff like, Leave this off the internet. Learn from my mistakes. I was a, one of the ones that took the arrows and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So her her personal life, her dating life, her relationship life, how it is that she operates is off limits. 
but she adds so much value into my life. And I'm going to use her as an example because there's multiple different people that add value into my life. But she adds so much value into my life as far as being an asset. She go and get that bag. Um, she gives me great advice. Uh, we throw ideas off of each other and it, we don't even always agree. But just because we don't disagree publicly to you because real people and real friends in real life uh, operate this way, people become incredibly insecure with what a real friendship is supposed to look like because they're not used to seeing healthy relationships, right? So much so to where they've largely fought me, beat me up, beat me down about insulating me. Yeah, Rita has been shopping, Q. <laughs> and, and Rita has a two-hour massage. I paid for Rita to go get a two-hour massage here at the Vidara. Uh... Because she's been such a such a good girl, such a good girl. But we'll get to that in a minute. But they're so used. They, they've been fighting and beating me up about insulating myself about everything that's going on. So I've taken their their advice and I've largely removed myself from seeing the things that most people see online on a regular basis. Right. And they're the ones that's in the mire. They're the ones that's kind of in the streets and knowing what's going on. You guys are familiarizing me with what's happening. So when I seen somebody email me and they sent me two videos, both of which I'm going to use today as a reference point, and they sent me this video of MTR and he was talking about uh, getting his hands dirty and we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, nothing surprises me. Absolutely nothing surprises me. All the way to the point to where um, I was talking to Rita this morning and I said, I'm thinking about pulling my daughter out of regular school. Shout out to Aaron on my dog, another guy that absolutely is a part of the team and adds value into my life. I'm thinking about pulling my daughter out of regular school, homeschooling her, traveling the world, uh, having her immerse herself even more into the cultural norms by which she's become accustomed to and all of the travel and hanging out with her real friends outside of the internet or within her school and things like that. You know, Rita, her and I, we had a conversation last week and I didn't really take it as serious as I am now uh, until I started seeing everything that's happening in society. You guys sending me these videos of what's going on uh, in downtown Chicago. Um, I keep seeing all of these school shootings and shit like that. And, you know, these these institutions have largely become liberal indoctrination camps. You can't turn an eye without them perverting God's rainbow into being a symbol for the, the LGBT alphabet community. And it's like, this is one of the things that I feared or we had a conversation about and we didn't realize it was going to be as bad as it is now, 15 years later. But th these were one of the things that Rita and I were having a conversation about, about why one of the largest reasons why we were very adamant about possibly not having a kid in the first place. And if we were going to have a kid, then we were going to put everything that we had into ourselves and then into her in order to ensure that we had the resources to be able to travel the world. We had the resources to be able to send her to college without having to worry about her getting student loan debt, had the resources to cover her and to not have to split things up in order to make sure that this person can do it and this person can do it, that we can decide to go and live in a different country. We can live in a different state. We can pick up and move and do whatever we want to do when we wanted to do it. And we were very intentional about that. And so when we had this conversation last week, and my daughter was like, yo, dad, it's this program uh, since because my daughter is ranked number one in the country in Taekwondo for her age group. And she was like, yo, I'm on a national team. I'm on a USA team. I'm on, I'm on a junior Olympics and all of this. And it's this program. And this girl just did it. And she's telling me about all of this stuff that they doing and how they get to travel and, you know, the new experiences and how it shaped their narrative. And this is how my daughter talks. She's very smart, very mature. Q know her in real life, the whole nine yards. And so I didn't take it serious because I'm like, no, Leslie, it's benefits to going to school, you know, the social aspect of it and so on and so forth. But what are we really pushing our kids to do? 
Why are we continuing to push our kids to accept these social norms as crafted by the people that voted somebody in office and the overwhelming majority of the people are voting out of ignorance and they're being sold a lie? And so then we push our kids into these indoctrination camps that's not even best for them. And so now I'm talking to my, my wife this morning and I was talking, we was FaceTiming with our, with our daughter all last night and stuff like that. And it's a strong possibility. I mean, I'm probably leaning probably 75, 25, 75 percent in favor of pulling my daughter out of public schools, um, homeschooling her and then just traveling the world. What do you all think about that? I'm strongly considering. And I was talking to Rita this morning, strongly considering. um pulling my daughter out of public schools, removing her from this very, very terrible, horrible world and just traveling the world. Traveling the world. I can do this shit from anywhere. I can do this from anywhere. And I can always get back to Detroit to my home base to be able to cook up a show or whatever. We got the studio, right? I can do my regular corporate job from anywhere. My real estate portfolio is going to be popping off no matter where it is that I go. I'm strongly considerate, yo. I'm seeing what y'all talking about in the chat. And I was driving around um, the city the other day in Detroit. It's fucked up out here. And and you know the worst part about public schools? Well, first let me say this. The thing that I really, really, um, that I hated as a child, which I made adjustments when I had a child, is that I didn't feel like my parents took the things that I thought as serious as they should have because they said, well, I'm the parent, and they didn't take it in consideration. Now, we still have to make the best decision on behalf of our children. That's why we are mothers and fathers and parents because our, chil our children are not our friends. Uh, so we have to cover them first. But when she intelligently communicates to me her thoughts, I seriously take that into consideration. And as a father, I have to make adjustments in order to ensure that she gets the best of everything the best opportunities, the best cultural experiences. My daughter don't run in the victim Olympics. She does not believe in aligning herself with people just because they black. She has her own thoughts. She thinks for herself. She knows how to cook. I see my wife with her all the time and she's teaching her how to cook and do all of these things. And so I'm very, very blessed. I'm very, very thankful. Um, but I've always also made good decisions in order to ensure that I took what God blessed me with and I made the best out of it because, you know, I get to have a wife that gets to work with my daughter. Uh, I get to have a daughter uh, that we spare no expense as far as ensuring that she has all of the resources she needs to be successful. Um, I get to participate and I've largely participated in, a, you know, watching her grow up and being a force in her life to show her exactly what a man is supposed to look like uh, so that hopefully one day she marries a man that's similar to her father. Uh, but this world is fucked up. It's fucked up. What's that, baby? I was talking to one of her teachers yesterday. You was talking to one of her teachers yesterday? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. She was saying how because the kids are so bad. Mm-hmm. The parents are not doing anything. And so the teachers are, like, giving up. And it's so many teachers that's about to retire because they're just tired of teaching these kids. I heard about that. I was, I was coaching somebody that told me that, too. Yeah. I don't know if y'all heard that, but Rita said she was talking to one of Leslie's teachers yesterday. And she was saying that because the, the majority of the kids in schools and my, my daughter goes to a phenomenal school. Yeah, because everything is all liberal and stuff. My, she's my wife was saying that the teacher was telling her that the overwhelming majority of the teachers. Uh, that can retire or are looking to retire because the parents don't parent anymore. Um, 
the administration can't do anything. Their hands is tied. Everything is based off of this PC culture that we live in today. And so I'm strong. I really think that it wouldn't be a bad move to pull her out and just homeschool her. So we're going to make that decision as a family. Uh, what I would suggest to you guys and a lesson that I'm trying to give you as a result of having this conversation with you is, A, don't go woke. This culture that we live in is trash. It's been trash. I said it from the very beginning, um, and I stand on that. B, if you are going to have children, don't do it based off of what the standards were yesteryear because we live in different times. You have to adjust, and you have to understand that uh, it's very expensive to raise a kid, and you want to be in a position to give your child the best possible chance to succeed in his lifetime. Last but not least, these girls and these young boys, they need strong, and I mean strong, not just a father, they need strong men and fathers in their lives. Women, be careful who it is that you open up your legs to and, and let nut in you. Let's get, let's get real. Be careful who you open up your legs to and let nut in you because you are also responsible and to be held responsible for who it is that you have children with. Marry before you carry. Also marry your best friend. Be very, very careful about who it is that you align yourself with. And do not find yourself in a position to where you are now a baby mama trying to give advice on YouTube about how it is that women need to be feminine. Stop it, fam. These kids, they need strong fathers in their life. And when I say strong, I mean men that are not willing to move based off of what the majority of people are saying in this woke culture, but men that stand on a square and a principles and is a reflection of what you would want your daughter to marry and what you would want your son to grow up to be like. That got a backbone that stand for what they believe in and don't move based off of the mob. All right. So let me let me uh let me read these super chats and then we're gonna get it popping in the show. We got a great show for y'all today. It's gonna be <laughs> I got a feeling it's gonna be an interesting show today. Make sure you tell your family and friends, uh, because it's gonna be very, very interesting. Uh let's see. Greatness to work says do it. Best decision I ever made. I have all daughters, all homeschooling, way better. My, both my oldest are graduating early. Best thing for family men. Greatness to work said it's the best thing ever, Rita. Uh, Ash says, good morning, Anton. Good morning, Ash. And thank you for the fireball. Thank you for supporting the platform. Um, we appreciate you. Let's get started with the show. All right. So first and foremost, um, let's see what we got here. MTR, right? Mediocre tutorial and reviews uh, decided to get his hands dirty, right? Now, I have to extend a level of respect. Although I do not agree with everything, the overwhelming majority of MTR's takes as far as his assessment towards society or what's happening within society, um, I can't disagree with him. I do disagree with some things uh, that he has had a take on, especially as of recently, uh, with regard to the black community, but I don't expect to agree with everything that anybody says. And that does not mean that I have any less respect for them as a result of it. Right. But I have to give a lot of respect and, uh, I just got to call it like it is. I'm objective enough to acknowledge exactly what's happening and MTR getting his hands dirty from my perspective, regardless of what he stands for as far as what his takes are, is commendable and respect, you know, it's respect, it's respectable in itself. And let me tell you why. Because most content creators are looking to play it safe. Regardless of what side of the aisle that they stand on, uh, they're looking to play it safe. Now, I have seen this video because somebody sent it to me this morning, right? And I do not have an opinion, uh about said person that is being communicated about in this video per se. This is more about MTR and men within the space specifically, okay? Uh, I am consistent. Uh, I will not have a take on any particular person in, you know, for that. And so I'm going to scrub through the video in order to have this conversation 
Um, to illustrate exactly why I have more respect for MTR than other content creators uh, across the internet. So make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with this video. Uh, I'm going to be reading Super Chats throughout the show. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, let me get into the video. So I'm going to scrub through this really, really quickly. She's going to play the clip of someone. Shout out to Nate. <laughs> back from London since I dropped that video specific to distancing myself publicly from the Just Pearly Things platform. A lot has happened. I'd argue that YouTube is a mess, a drama filled mess. When I dropped my video though, before I dropped it, I knew that it was going to cause a schism. I knew that it was going to cause a division. How was it that I knew that? Well, I understand how media works. I understand how YouTube works. I understand that successful content creators that build a platform from nothing, they do that on a sense of values, morals, principles, and ideas. Let's stop there. Successful content creators that build their platform from nothing, from nothing. Words matter. He is absolutely right about this. The reason why I feel so comfortable standing on my square of whatever it is that I believe based off of what's being communicated uh, on the Internet today is because I'm not owned by anybody and anybody that's ever rocked with me is doing so based off of the fact that they found me standing in my square or on my square and my core audience are with me, not necessarily because they agree with everything that I say, but they're with me because uh, they know that I'm going to be honest and I'm going to tell the truth based off of what I really feel. That's the character of a man, right? The difference, and I had this conversation with the lead attorney, and I actually had it publicly, right? And it was me, the lead attorney, and Jay, uh, Pocket Watch with JT. And I told the lead attorney, he said, listen, would you rather have a million subscribers uh, or 100,000 subscribers? like I have now, right? Combined just between the Anton Daniels channel and the Millionaire Morning Show, uh, we've eclipsed over 300,000 subscribers, but that's not the point. He said, would you rather have a million subscribers or 100,000 subscribers, right? And I said, I'd rather have 100,000 core subscribers. And they laughed at me. And shout out to my dog, lead attorney. I love the lead attorney. Um, that's my guy, I really rock with him. And they laughed at me and they clipped it up and they said, ah, oh, Anton said he would rather not have a million subscribers, right? But I added the context in that video and I said, I'd rather have a core 100,000, I'd rather have a core 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people that truly, truly, truly love me and roll with me no matter what it is through the controversies, through my ups and my downs and my hot takes and the things that they agree with me and disagree with me. Because when you have a core group of people that love you, you can't be shaken. They're not wavering back and forth based off of mob culture. Conversely, you have a million fair weather people, you can fall the fuck off tomorrow. And nobody is going to care about you because the thing that they subscribe to you is easily taken away from you. And you've never truly built a core audience that then rocks with you and is the base, is the foundation of who it is that you are or what it is that you've been doing in the first place. I've never wanted people to subscribe to me because of the type of content that I put out. I've always been focused on building a core audience based off of the fact that they rock with me because of who I am and not just because of the fact that I may talk about money or modern women or uh, urban exploration back in the day or how much money and gambling and all of this other type of stuff. They're with me, not just the content, right? Because the minute that you evolve is similar to these Nickelodeon kids and, and some of them are able to make the transition in order from being a kid actor and a kid rapper and some of them is still being labeled as uh, a child in which they've never been able to evolve because their core audience was rocking with them based off of the fact that they found them on that show 
and not because they actually seen the value in who they were specifically, right? But let me go ahead and continue. And logic that their viewers and their audience members lock into. What I understood, the quickness that Pearl was able to gain her base is based off of this idea and concept of a modern woman, right? And dispelling all of the propaganda and beliefs that has propelled many of these feminist ideologies forward over the past several decades. When she shifted into a different type of content, that content hit users' eyes and forced them to make a decision dependent upon if you agreed with her or if you did not agree with her, okay? So he's talking about the Just Pearly things, right? And so he's saying basically that Pearl and the content that she was putting out was based off of things that he was agreeing with with regard to relationships. Now, when Pearl pivoted and she started having more controversial subjects on the platform, it forced people to pick a side of whether or not they agreed with it or disagreed with it, which then ultimately is supposed to translate into whether or not you're going to still rock with the channel, you're going to subscribe, or you're going to continue to move on. From early observations, Pearl hasn't lost any subscribers. As a matter of fact, she continues to gain. But neither here nor there. So Pearl hit a certain stage of her content creation journey where component of her audience base has to make a decision. And based off of that decision in which side of the fence that you fell on is whether or not you chose to stay subscribed or unsubscribed. But what I now I do agree with this Kempler files MTR acting like he didn't know before he went on the show. Now, I wouldn't call him a clown. I would just say that he understood the business opportunity that came from continuing to put his brand in front of a core group of, fo of followers or subscribers that may not have been familiar with his content. The other side of that conversation, and this is the thing that I disagreed with MTR on, was uh, if you are going to rock with somebody um, and you have their phone number and you are able to communicate with them or even hold them accountable offline, then do so other than nuking them when you were looking at them as a business opportunity in order to come up and continue to create more visibility for your platform. And see, that's the part that I disagree with him about, right? Doesn't mean that I'm right. Doesn't mean that he's right. Doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Doesn't mean that he's wrong. That's just my opinion personally. Uh, it doesn't mean that I've lost any respect for him as a man or as a person simply because I have a difference of opinion. And that's where I stood. I stood on one side of the aisle. He stood on other sides of the aisle. It's a, it's a lot of other people that pick different sides of the aisle in order to be able to stand on. Uh, it's people that I'm super cool with. I talk to Crimson Cure on the phone the way that I should have been dealing with other people. But me and Crimson Cure had a conversation on the phone. And I said, listen, I don't know where you stand on this. And this is before the whole thing went off. I said, I don't know where you stand on it. I'm sure you probably know where I stand on it. But anything that happens as a result of this, it ain't got nothing to do with you. If you got a problem with me, hit me up. If I got a problem with you, I'll call you because you know I value you. You know I rock with you. And Crimson Cure was like, oh, Anton, I love you, baby. You know, you know how Crimson is. She's such a sweet girl. I love Crimson Cure. Um, and she kept it solid. And to this day, I can call Crimson Cure right now or Crimson Cure will call me and say, Anton, what do you think about this? And 99% and of the conversations that we have don't even have shit to do with the internet. It's just on some real stuff. But again, I can disagree with him on that particular position, but it doesn't change my perspective of how it is that he stands on whatever he stands on as far as his willingness to take accountability for whatever it is decision that he makes as a result of it. Let's continue. Didn't predict is how much of the space is essentially a powder keg that was waiting to explode. Because although the issue happened at one of the most subscribed to people within the space, the bloodshed didn't really occur until everyone else got their palms and their hands on it. Because that's when the real battle started. And from a distance looking in, it's some of the most egregious drama. I don't care. Listen, listen, I hear a lot of y'all saying Anton, he said he caught her before the video. I said what I said. I don't care about whether or not you caught. Listen, just because 
if me and Q get into it, now me and Q is cool in real life. I have her phone number. I can call her. Now, let's say that Q says something that I disagrees with, right? Just because I call Q and say, yo, I'm about to drop a video about you online doesn't make it any less egregious. I still will never, ever talk negatively about Q publicly to anybody. Anything that I have to say about Q, whether we continue our relationship or not, friendship or not, that's between me and her. Just because I call you before I do something and I announce to you before I'm going to do it doesn't make it any less egregious from my perspective with regard to that one specific situation. A lot of y'all think that just because you tell somebody that you're going to do them dirty, that that makes it any less dirty, that that's supposed to mean something for me. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything to me whatsoever. Shout out to you for giving me a heads up so I can prepare myself from the bomb that you're about to drop on me. But that don't mean nothing to me. Where was y'all raised at? Where y'all born at? Where y'all from? That's how they do it from where y'all from? Man, get out of here with that. But again, that's my take on that specific situation. I'm sure that there's a lot of people that disagree with me on the fact that I even stood, uh, stood 10 toes down with Pearl in the first place because I do know her in real life. But that's just me. I'm a field-ish that I have ever seen on this platform. Now, on one side of the coin, you could say, hey, listen, MTR, but listen, drama is good, baby. Who cares? All right? Somebody said, that's why you got done dirty by the six-foot behemoth. Who get done dirty? Who got done dirty? Y'all don't see what happens long-term? Y'all not seeing how this is playing out? Y'all not seeing how this is playing out? Okay. How the high I get done dirty? Because somebody said they didn't want to be my friend no more? What that's supposed to mean something to me? I, I, I don't think that this get being done dirty. I think that that's a blessing because at least I know where you stand and I can make adjustments as far as, you know, I don't have to still defend you, rock with you or whatever like that. She said what she said. I said what I said. We moved on. She living her life. And so now she got to deal with the shrapnel and the repercussions that come along with however it is that she moving. I didn't get done dirty. I'm fucking overlooking Vegas right now. With literally $10,000 right in front of me and I'm leaving richer than I was before I left it, before I came to Vegas. How did I get done dirty? Let everyone burn each other at the stake. And to that I say, yeah, go ahead, sure. As a larger content creator, I have the luxury to be able to point at different situations and pick which topics that I want to be able to talk about. I think times like this, the strongest will survive. And you'll see content creators fall because they can't handle the pressure or content creators that really demonstrate a sense of talent and work ethic mixed with execution that allows them to sustain for years into the future. So what is it that I'm talking about here today? Well, he's basically saying before he's breaking this down, and again, I'm only going to play the MTR part. Uh, because I don't have an opinion about what it is that he said. And I'll actually link the the this video in the description for y'all to go and watch it in its entirety if you're interested. Um, I don't have an opinion about her one way or another. But I do like the fact that he's addressing the elephant in the room. And he's saying, listen, this is what I stood for. And this is what I think now. In the video that I did on Pearl, towards the end of that video... I called out specific content creators that I thought would be great people for viewers to be able to find and to look at because I thought they were great compliments to the space. Now, he named several different content creators. Um, I think he named Courtney Michelle. I think he named Six the Goddess. I think he named uh, Six the Goddess's friend. Danica, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, and I think he recommended somebody else, right? Um, but I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly who all of the people that he recommended. But I will say the overwhelming majority of the people that he recommended on that list, uh, I disagree with. I disagree with him supporting and recommending the overwhelming majority of the people that was on that list. Because there's no way in the world uh, that we should have, well, I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. Let's continue. One of those content creators, I now have to rescind my recommendation because of what I just recently watched. 
So let's get into it. So his perspective basically is saying that he has to rescind uh, his recommendation from one of those content creators uh, simply because of apparently the fallout between Nathan and said content creator. Let me see if I can scrub through this really quickly because, like I said, if y'all want to go and watch the whole video, y'all can. I just want to get MTR's take specifically. And again, I'm going to leave the link in the description for y'all to be able to check out this video. Uh, and you can see it for yourself. As a matter of fact, I'll drop it in the chat right now. Well, I'm not going to drop it in the chat, but I'll, I'll put that in there. Um, and y'all can go and see it for yourself. The community that he serves in, I believe that said Dunwoody, which is in Atlanta. So a predominantly black community trying to protect that community. And this happens to him. And that's how you stay on code. It seems like staying on code only matters for people that agree with your statements. Man. Let me stop that right there. Remember this whole cold thing? Remember this whole cold thing that y'all keep saying? I've seen no less than at least 100 comments on different videos where people were saying, of my videos specifically, where everybody was saying, Anton ain't on cold. Anton ain't on cold. Why you ain't on cold with the black? Who, who's cold? Half of y'all don't even fuck with each other. Half of y'all don't even like each other. The only code that I have is that I'm aligning with people that's going in the direction that I'm going in from here on out. And then on top of that, on top of that, if I know you in real life, I'm never dissing you online. I don't have an opinion about that either way. Um, and nobody can get me to hold you accountable publicly if I have your phone number privately and I truly say that I rock with you in real life. Now, the additional context of that is just because you got my fucking phone number don't mean that I rock with you in real life. It's a lot of people that got my phone number that I don't necessarily rock with in real life. I don't know where they got it from. Uh, some people got it as a result of us doing business together, but that don't necessarily mean that I rock with you in real life. But who's cold? The black cold? The black community cold? There is no cold in the black community. There is no cold in the black community. That is a fact. And the minute that y'all realize that and y'all start aligning yourself with people based off of the fact that you really rock with them instead of just because of the color of their skin, something that they can't even control, that's the dumbest thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. And listen to me, you cannot defend shit like this. Once a chameleon tells you who they are, then you should believe them. The evilness through the hypocrisy is just so crazy to me. How many men throughout history have lost their jobs or their livelihood talking to women like this, interacting with women like this. How many men are incarcerated right now defending the honor of a woman like this? How many men are six feet deep because they tried to defend the honor of a woman like this? I see what he did there. He did the six feet thing. <laughs> MTR should be a rapper. MTR is throwing subs like Jay-Z did. MTR is throwing subs like Jay-Z did. Real talk. And let, let me take some accountability. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty, right? Because uh, I went against a lot of people that said, Anton, nope. Anton, you need to do this. Anton, you need to do that. And I said, nah, fuck that. I don't care how right they are. I don't care how wrong they are. What you're not going to do is come on my platform and talk any kind of bullshit about the person that I personally rock with. I'm guilty. I have to bring myself to the front of the congregation. I am guilty. And all of the content is there for y'all to see. I am the person. I am one of the people that said that, nope, logic, nope, chaotic, nope, Nathan, while I'm here, you know, nah, I don't give a fuck about what y'all do on your own platform because that's y'all platform. You created it. You got your own audience. That's what it is that you stand for. But as far as when you come on my platform and you come on my panel and you do this, you're not going to address somebody that I personally know in real life. And I'm not going to do it because I can have a conversation with them in real life.
Now, I don't know if that makes me guilty of doing something bad other than uh, holding down the principles of what loyalty really looks like. Um, but at the same time, what I see happening here is that essentially I went against Q. Nope, Q, we're not doing it. Essentially, what I believe that happens, and one of the reasons why I'm always so comfortable rocking out the way that I'm rocking out, is because I believe that the truth eventually always, it's not always going to come out immediately. People going to feel it some type, some type of way and all of that, whatever. But it's not always going to come out immediately. But I think that the truth always comes to the light. And so now that you see how everything is playing out, and the people that were all supposed to be on cold are now turning against each other, I want you to sit here and tell me that I was right. I predicted it. I told you that it was going to happen. I told you that you needed to get off of this plantation mentality of everybody thinking that they rock with each other. Black people been against each other since the beginning of time. The difference is that now we realize that it's a difference between black people and niggas. And these people, largely, overwhelmingly, the majority of them, and this is to nobody specifically, this is just in general, I'm talking about the general, general public that has so much to say, has never given a black person a job, has never held down a black person, has never married a, never married a black person. The only thing that they've done has been a nuisance to their community, and they've never truly added any, any value. And now we think that just because they have platforms that we're supposed to listen to them because of what again? I would say to you that I'm more pro-black than everybody that labels themselves pro-black in this space based off of exactly what I do in real life and what my results are. I want to continue to hear what MTR got to say. You're a fool if you turn a cheek and you think that it won't happen to you. It's never dope to do videos like this, but calling out the blatant hypocrisy, the dirty tactics, in the BS in the space as it refers to men, respect for men, and for men's honor is absolutely necessary because I will not stand for it. Not on my watch. Questions come. I, listen, listen. I have to give respect to MTR for A, addressing whatever it is that he felt, B, getting his hands dirty and see I don't think that we all get it right I don't I don't get it right I certainly don't get it right uh some of the times I think I'm right the majority of the times but I certainly get it wrong sometimes and that's why I got people around me uh that gives me great insight and information in order to be able to make adjustments uh but I got to give a shout out to MTR I don't agree with him on everything that he says but I absolutely respect uh the fact that he's willing to get his hands dirty there's nothing more entertaining than black YouTube, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read some of these super chats and then we're going to get it popping. <laughs> this is going to be a great show. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got uh, Mr. Lone Star. Mr. Lone Star says, and the substitute teachers are doing crazy stuff like starting a fight club in a class here in Dallas. Lack of parenting is pushing away the teachers. Yeah, I think I got to get my I got to get my daughter up out of here. Thank you, homie talk. Uh, AP313, shout out to my, my 313ers, my Detroiters, I appreciate you. Debo the God says, uh, like Derek Jackson, he had a million subs. I was I came across some videos that some people were sending me of Derek Jackson uh, a couple days ago. I might have to do a review on Derek Jackson, bring him back to the front of the congregation. Marcus Evans says, what's wrong with some of the women MTR listed? Well, he just broke down why he felt like it was wrong with it. That ain't my opinion. M MTR said it. I'm going to come back to you, Ash, because you didn't drop the bag. Uh, Homie Talk says the cold don't even matter once they decide they don't like you. Facts. Ain't no more cold. They will go after your wife. They will go after your children. They will go after your income. They will dox you. It ain't no cold once they decide that they don't like you. Um, Woke Quill says conform to our delusions and expectations equals cold. That's a great, great breakdown. Jojo says, hi, everybody. After getting passed on by, Ex by Expedia group for a person with a degree, I know how you felt back then. Yep, you remember the video I dropped about that. I was more experienced for the security operations analyst role. It just bothers me. Well, don't let it bother you, Jojo. The thing that I did is I girded up. I went back to school. I went and got my degree. Um, I studied more. I realized that I had to be 
uh, a lot better on paper, just as much as I was uh, in my ability to be able to sell myself in an interview process, to even get over that barrier and get over that hump. I know it bothers you, but let that bothersome feeling uh, propel you to be successful by being negatively motivated. Turn that bad energy into positive energy and go get that bag, bro. Marcus Evans says she owe that man an apology. That's y'all opinion. I'm staying out of that. Self Made Forever says it would be really interesting to hear a Patreon episode with Cynthia G. Never thought I would hear the Nika Marie agree with the black woman divestor community. Uh, they also are calling on Crimson Cure. They can do whatever they want to do. I don't have a problem with women divesting that don't want to be a part of it. If you can, go get a man. Uh, here's the thing about divestor communities, self-made forever, and then I'm going to come to Ash. Why ain't they got a white man or an Asian man or Hispanic man? People can call, listen, listen, listen. I don't take anything that anybody says seriously until they actually show me some receipts or the results. It doesn't mean anything to me. None of it means anything to me. Who cares? What you wait, wait, wait. You think that these men see more value in our women than we do? Let them go. If they can get them, let them. If they can get them, let them. Listen, if y'all don't want them, because I'm already married, if y'all don't want them, then why are you trying to hold them back from letting another community of people? Adopt them. Let them. If they can get them, let them. I want to see what the results are. I want to see every last one of these divestor women go ahead and get married to a dude that is outside of the community and then show us what the results look like. I don't see not one woman, not one major content creator woman that uh, has a white husband on the platform showing him off or can show him in any Instagram photo, can show a, a ring on a finger, can show a marriage certificate to show me how divesting is working for them. Whatever the solution is that they got, where's the results? What difference do it make? What the fuck do we care? Go find the women that want to rock with you. Go where you celebrated, not where you tolerated. I don't, I don't see what the issue is. Let them go. I ain't tripping off that. Uh, Low Black Duck 2001 is in the building. Says, "Sup, Anton? Look into Laurel Springs School. I checked that out. Thank you. And let me give a shout out to my dog Ash. Ash is sprinkling money on me like I'm some stripper out here in Vegas. Said, uh, I rock with you, AD Obsidian, Tommy Sotomayor, lead attorney, angry man, kosher clinician, BGS, Ipmore, to name a few. You all did not throw just pearly things under the bus. Do not preach white supremacy and pro-black talking points." I only surround myself with real men who are not easily moved. You get it. You get it. Ash, get it. The, my core audience and the people that roll with me the most get it. They understand that real men stand on a square. They don't move based off of what the mob mentality is trying to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. Fuck them. Fuck them. Let them do what it is that they want to do. I got my people. I got my core audience. I got my bag chasers. I got my members. I got my ashes. Thank you, Ash, for holding me down for the 200 ball, bro. I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate everybody that contributes to the platform from a dollar to whatever it is that you do. I don't ask for it, but I absolutely value the fact that y'all holding me down based off of the fact that you see value in what it is that I'm bringing to the community in these conversations, right? So we going to do what we do, baby. Let's continue. Now, reading Super Chats throughout the show, tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's continue. Hyenas. Hyenas. This, you know what's so funny? <laughs> Y'all not going to like this take. Y'all not going to like what it is that I'm about to have a conversation about right now. I'm about to shut this. Sound like, look like the sun is really coming up here. Y'all not going to like what it is that I'm about to say right now. And I'm going to preface this by saying that um, if you don't like me telling it like it is, then go ahead and dislike for the YouTube algorithm. We got seven dislikes right now. Hey, uh, get the likes up. Uh, make sure you share this with your family and friends. Let's kick it, right? 
me and my wife are walking down um, Las Vegas Boulevard yesterday. Um, I had a taste for some shakes, so we went over to the Shake Shack. Um, and we walked through the other part of the strip. So the most popular part of the strip is the Bellagio Fountains, right? Because the Bellagio is surrounded by Caesars. It's surrounded by uh, the Cosmopolitan. Uh, Aria is on the other side. You got MGM Grand. And then across the street, you got, uh, what is that? New York, New York, Planet Hollywood, Paris, all of that type of stuff, right? And so you got the Flamingo, the Drez. And then as you go further down the strip and you head towards downtown, uh, that's where you got Resorts World, where they just built the new Resorts World. Um, casino, we got Park MGM, Aria Vidara, so on and so forth. And as you walk down the strip, right? And even if you catch the bus, because I've caught the bus in Vegas, I've been vlogging the whole time, I'm going to drop the whole vlog, it's going to be like an hour long at the end of the end of the week. And then we went over to New York, New York, we went down to more, you know, the Luxor area, Excalibur, and that's where Shake Shack is, right? And so as we were walking, I said, Rita, have you noticed black women here? And she said, hmm. I already knew you was going to say it. I said, have you noticed the black women here? And she said, go ahead and say it, Anton. I said, no, I'm going to say it online tomorrow. And she said, what's your thoughts? I said, they all look the same. This is my honest to God observation of what it was that I was looking at. In Vegas, they flying here from all over. They flying here from Chicago, Detroit. When Usher was having his concert, he would say, hey, who was here? What well, a DJ was saying, hey, who here from San Francisco? Who here from New York or oh, whatever? Right. And when we went into the concert and as you walk down Las Vegas Boulevard every single day, they all look the same. And let me tell you what they look like. This is the honest to God truth. My first adjective. Hard. Hard. They look like. Their skin feels hard. They look like, like tough. Like they've been scrapping in the streets. And the reason that it looks like that is because everyone got a, uh, they, I seen a chick with a teardrop tattoo on her eye, under her eye. And you know, that's, that's generally for people that's killed somebody in prison. They get the teardrop, right? I seen chicks with tattoos all on their necks. Every other one got a messed up BBL and the BBL, it ain't jiggling. It's like, it's hard. It looks hard. And so you can tell the difference between a woman that's in the gym and a woman that got a BBL, right? Because usually what happens is women that get BBLs, they get, I guess they get it sucked out of their stomach. So their waist is really small, but the rest of their body is still big. And so their arms is like this. And they thighs and they, they legs and they calves. And then they waist is real small. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why do they look like that? And the, and the ass is hard. It's lumpy and it's hard. And I was like. And then they all had. Now, this is just what I was seeing in Vegas. They all had these wigs on, right? And the wigs. It's got like the baby hairs is big, like the baby hairs come all the way down here. And I was like, why is they all they all got these these wigs on? And they got these they hard looking with the tattoos and stuff. And then they top it off with the eyelashes. Right. And the eyelashes is really exaggerated and they really big. And I was like. How did this become our cultural norm? And they talk like this. And all of them call each other bitch, bitch. Bitch, you don't, bitch, you crazy. And I was like, oh. And every nigga that walked up to him was like, Shawty. And they had the mop head and they had the braids. And they were smoking trees, right? And every chick, I got into an elevator with a chick. And the minute I got out of the elevator and she started talking and I could just smell the 
As soon as she started talking, I just smelled the weed on her breath. It smelled like fentanyl and weed. Now, I'm not really sure what fentanyl smell like. <laughs> I'm not sure what fentanyl smell like, but I'm, a, I'm assuming that it's an accelerant, like it's an exaggeration of whatever the original smell was, because it was really pronounced, right? I'm like, I like it. She said, she said, I like your watch. What you want? Oh, you want my clothes? All right. She getting my clothes to come and wash my clothes. Yeah, girl. <laughs> they said I done went too far, Anton. <laughs> I didn't go too far. I'm telling you what I see. I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't do it. I'm reading Super Chats throughout the show. I'm not saying what they should or should do. I'm telling you what it is that I witnessed walking down the street, going into the forum shops, Looking at Las Vegas Boulevard, the whole nine yards. Now, I don't get to see him on the plane uh, because I get in, get on first, and I get off first, all right? I get on first, and I get off first, and I only ride first class, so I don't really get to see him. Because by the time I get on the plane, I'm knocked out, and I don't get to see you pass by me, and I get to walk straight, and that's just the way it is, right? But this is what I'm looking at, right? And so when I see this woman, when I see this woman right here, and shout out to Chicago. Chicago, y'all going to be on the front page today on the Millionaire Morning Show. When I see this woman and I see her mugshot and I see her walking down the street in this picture right here, she looks just like the same women that I was seeing walking up Las Vegas Boulevard. No lie. I'll play the video for you. Let's go ahead and get started. First, a gas station confrontation gets turned upside down. The Look at chaotic it. situation that ended with a woman's SUV on its roof in the middle of the street in Forest Park. It was all caught on camera. An argument. A man dragged and a flipped over SUV. And now a woman in that. A man dragged. That's usually how it ends up. A man catches the shrapnel of a woman driving a 3,000 pound missile down the street. But let's continue. SUV is charged. Tia Ewing has a disturbing situation all around. I guess the good thing is uh, nobody was hurt in this. It's wild, and Forest Park police tell us this video you're about to see helped them piece together exactly what happened, and now a female is in custody. I'm my baby. I'm my baby. Y'all better go ahead. This Why do they always say, oh, my baby? Look, now look. Look at the context clues, because on the surface, if you just look at this video, you're going to say, <clears throat> oh, that, that woman is crazy, whatever. Look at every single, we're going to break this video down, right? Let me go ahead and make sure that I can see this in every frame. Look at every single woman that's in this video. Every single woman that's captured on camera in this video. Check them out. Wild one, video. see one. It was recorded after an argument started at Jackson Boulevard and Harlem Avenue at the Thornton's gas station Sunday after three. Jay Mills recorded it all. Jay Mills record. Shout out to Jay Mills for catching that good footage for us to be able to review today. They, just, they was like, they started throwing cuffs and balls. I'm like, it's, it's for the escalate. He was with his family and they say. There go two. Woo. Look, prototype. Prototype. I could not have stopped it at a better at a better spot. Prototype. These are our women. These are our queens. These are our queens. These are the ones that we're supposed to protect and have provision for. Look at her. Hard. Black lips. Menace to society. They got mad at me and they tried to hold me accountable for saying that uh, a lot of black women have largely been the biggest enemy to men, even more than white men. I would agree. I stand on that. Look at him. The woman behind the wheel of the Ford SUV started hurling homophobic and racial slurs at the two. Oh, my baby, hit it. Shout out to our black queens out here. Shout out to our black queens out here. You see him? You see him? From there, the fight escalated as people were trying to. Look, look at this. The female driver hits the. I'm going to rewind it. Don't worry. This. Look, 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 look. Guys 
are built for war. We're war machines. We've been doing this since the beginning of time. We're dealing with a new threat right now. That's a fucking Ford. That's like a 2003 Ford Explorer. You know how heavy that thing is? Let me rewind it. I'm going to just play it in its entirety. Jackson Boulevard in Harlem Avenue at the Thornton's gas station Sunday after three. Jay Mills recorded it all. Because they, they was like, they started throwing cups and bars. I'm like, it's, it's going to escalate. He was with his family, and they say the woman behind the wheel of the Ford SUV started hurling homophobic and racial slurs at the two. Oh, my baby, Kitty. Oh, my baby, Kitty. Oh, my calling them the N-word and, um, Monkey. From there, the fight escalated as people were trying to. The female driver hits the red van, dragging the man that was with her for several feet. Then, this guy. Damn, damn. As the SUV fled the gas station, the driver struck a vehicle waiting at the southbound turn signal at Jackson and then flipped over. It was as if nothing happened at all. The driver managed to exit out of the broken window. Look, she the Terminator. She dragged the man that was with her. Look, look, look. She don't even have no regard for the guy that's with her. She don't even have no regard for the man that's with her. She jumped out the car after she flipped that motherfucker over and she walked out like the Terminator, like Robocop. She's indestructible indestructible and she walked out with her slippers and her house shoes like what the what the fuck is up yeah i flipped the car i dragged the dude that i was with the whole nine yards and started laughing look at her just how much damage was done the driver and male companion were far from done like bonnie and clyde they were captured on camera trying to flee the scene like come here i'm going to jail Forest Park Police is... Look, she's trying to help the dude that... She carrying the dude that she with. She's carrying the dude that she's with. This is wild. Hold on. Check this out. At the two... From there, the fight escalated as people were trying to... Female driver hits the red van, dragging the man that was with her for several feet. Then this guy. Damn, damn. As so, um, these are y'all queens. These are y'all queens. <laughs> I remember when I was on the Lapeef panel, <laughs> and they said, "Anton, what would you do if you seen uh, a woman like this?" Uh, in the streets going back and forth. I seen I said I seen a woman in the streets going back and forth. Uh what a dude. Would you would you jump in the middle of it? I said no, because what I seen happen before at the gas station specifically, a dude was going back and forth with his chick. They start fighting like blue face and Christian. And then a dude tried to white knight her and and step in and they both beat the dude up and they wind up driving off together. Man, I'm calling the police. Excuse me, 911. Uh, I got an emergency. I got a hyena out here disturbing the peace and attacking attacking these innocent men out here. Y'all keep talking about divesting. Divest to where? Divest to who? Who you where are you divesting at? To who? Who gonna take you? Where are you going? Where are you going? That's all I want to know. Who you divesting to and where you going and who gonna take you in? I'm not impressed. You ain't about to you are you are not about to finesse me and the and the line and the me thinking that somebody is gonna take you. Yeah, okay. Cliff Williams says, What's up, Anton? Uh whatever you, what are your thoughts on a baby bag chaser? A baby bag chaser summer camp. Woo! You know, these these kids, they demons out here. I don't know about that, Cliff. I don't know if I'm built for the kids today, bro. You're going to have to catch me on another summer. This summer is going to be uh, traveling and having a good time with the grown bag chasers. Elliot Jackson says, driving an ATO to sell my vending machines and invest money in real estate. What's your take on investing in areas like Memphis, Chicago, St. Louis, and buying a block when they all acting out? Uh, run. Run. I decided not to buy the block. 
Uh, I've decided to not invest in communities that don't even want to clean up their own yards. Uh, run. I think you should stay away from Chicago, Memphis, St. Louis, uh, ATL, uh, wherever it is that you see a large majority of the people that don't give a fuck about their community, get out of there and go and invest, go and invest in spaces uh, that you A, understand, and then B, that, that will actually appreciate over time instead of fixing some shit that they don't want to fix themselves. Don't do it, Elliot. Don't do it. That's my recommendation. Uh, they got diaper butt. <laughs> Shout out to Cliff. Mr. Lone Star says, because cause they're so wearing the same uniform, can't tell who the hoes are. I can. I can. Uh, Jean Wick says, Scar from Lion King Hyena Clan. Facts. Ian Gumude? Gumede? Gamede? What pisses me off is how most men lie and say they don't like these women with BBLs and eyelashes. Uh, human nature is simple. Women do it because they get male attention from it and not just from pookies. See, Aya, let me tell you the difference, bro. It's a difference between a woman that you will bust down versus a woman that you will marry. All right? Um, I don't think that guys, guys will do anything. They will have sex with anything. So just because a dude will bust it down doesn't necessarily mean that that translates into guys wanting that or they will settle for it. A lot of guys will settle for the circumstances at the end because they don't know no better. And that's why Passport Bros, I think, is so, so um, such a movement simply because when you get exposed to better, you start to do better. So that's my thoughts on that. Freedom says demonic. I agree. Jake Fever is in the building, says Suda News. Uh, do, they, do they identify as male or female? They're hybrids. They're hybrids. Greatness to Work says we're... All those protect black women. They don't come here. They know better than to come here. Roy Rainbow says women are broke. Men will always have to pay the bill. Uh, we're up. We just got to protect ourselves. Optimus Prime says, on my mama, Autobots, we out. Cliff Williams says, I'm talking about my son. He's well behaved. <laughs> I ain't raised no demons. You ain't say your son. You said the baby bag chasers. Uh, we'll talk about it, Cliff. Cliff, you got my number. So we'll talk about it. We'll kick it. Um, Chester Williams says, all right, time, got to keep it 100. Women follow the lead of men. No, they don't. Not these women. We dealing with a completely different demographic of women. Women are following other women. They're not following the lead of men. Women are following the lead of other women. They're not following the lead of men. That's not what we see happening today. Case in point, which inner city would you feel safe walking down today compared to our grandfather's time back in the day is sad. Well, that's because we actually had police in our neighborhoods and we had a structure and it wasn't necessarily the men that were preventing things from happening in our neighborhood. It was that uh, we were willing to hold each other accountable as far as making sure that um, our communities and our and our areas were, were safely policed. And when you give people the option to be able to do things for themselves, what happens is the most black city in America wind up filing for bankruptcy. And when all of the white people left uh, and they had white flight. Uh, you've seen the communities turn to trash and they burned all of their shit down. So I don't think that women are following the lead of men today. I don't think that women are following the lead of men today. I think that we live in a time where women are largely following their own lead and the roles are reversed. And um, as a result, you see what's happening in the state of our community. Uh, but let's continue to keep the heat on Chicago. Get the likes up. Tap into the Patreon link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Some breaking news off the top. Hundreds of teens flooding into downtown Chicago tonight. Smashing car windows trying to get into Millennium Park prompting a major police response. Within the past few minutes shots were fired near the corner of Madison. Look at all look at all them look at all of them teens. Downtown Chicago run over and ran amok by teens, right? Now let's let's really put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. I know you see the little whoop, swoop because uh, we got the sun shining on us, so we're not going to pivot. We're just going to let the sun shine on us. Think about this for a second, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people say, Anton, how come you've never done a Patreon meetup in Chicago? We've done Las Vegas. We've done uh, Miami multiple times. Houston. Dallas is going to be popping. Uh, L.A. 
I said Atlanta, D.C., New York, Detroit. We've done Patreon meetups, and it's been a vibe the entire time, right? A lot of people say, Anti, how come you won't do a Patreon meetup over in Chicago? Because every time that I turn on the news, yo, listen, I watched a, a clip yesterday, and I'm going to have to watch the whole documentary, and I might even break it down on a Millionaire Morning Show. I watched a clip yesterday of King Vaughn basically being a serial killer. Let me say that again. The dude that y'all love the most and say that he's a real one and keep it real and rest in peace. I think that King Vaughn is burning in hell. If you were a serial killer, meaning that this man had multiple bodies that he was catching and he was taking the lives of other people, let alone other black people in his own community. You cannot sit here and tell me that he got his angel wings and that God has said, hey, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come into the grace of the Lord. A serial killer. And Michigan. Now, we had a news crew on the scene, but they had to move because of safety concerns. I was there a little bit earlier, about an hour and a half ago, and saw police escorting tourists and visitors to their cars in the Millennium Park parking garage. The crowd was trying to get into Millennium Park, but there are checkpoints that are not allowing anyone under the age of 21 who's not with an adult to get in. So they're massing across the street on the other side of Michigan Avenue. I spoke to a woman whose car was smashed by people jumping on the windshield. She says the crowd began beating her husband as he sat in the driver's seat. He's now been sent to Northwestern Memorial. Memorial Hospital. I also talked to a woman, a Chicago native, who was appalled by what she saw. Shout out to my black queens. Shout out to my black queens. Let me make sure we can get the whole view, not just half of you. Shout out to my black queens. Go ahead, boo. You tell your story, baby girl. That's too bad as parents. Our kids should not be out here. Where are their parents at? That's my question. Look at the that. The situation continues to Now, no, no, no. What, let me tell you what they'll tell me as I'm looking at this, right? Look at this crowd, this mob, this mob of people in downtown Chicago where they saying defund the police run in the victim Olympics elect people based off of their sexual orientation and whether or not they black um, and elect very much the same type of people that we trying to get rid of uh, in Lori Lightfoot now what they'll tell us is these people are not a danger they're not a menace now, and then remember, it's a difference between black people and niggas, okay? Uh, black people are respectable. Black people take care of their families. They're faithful. Uh, they raise their children. I know a lot of great black men that's doing some awesome things, right? But this is what they'll tell me. They'll say, Anton, you stereotyping if you cross the street. Okay, I'll do you one better. How about if I see two blocks down, I see that. I'm just going to do a U-turn and go right on back to where I came from. I'm not even driving down that block. I'm not even driving down that block at all. Because you know why? My daughter will never, ever be in this mob in downtown Chicago on a school night breaking into shots ringing off. I told my daughter the other day, uh, <laughs> Rita, do you remember what I told Leslie the other day when she was in the room and I, me and her was uh, wrestling in the living room? And I said, I said, baby, I'm, I'm, uh, I was driving in the hood the other day. Oh yeah, and she it. I told her, you remember? Yeah. I said, Leslie, my little baby. She said, what, Dad? Mm, mm, mm. So she, she, we wrestling. She showing me her new Taekwondo moves. She kicking my ass, right? And I said, my little baby, oh, so I gave her a hug. She said, what? I said, you're not built for the streets, honey. She started cracking up. I said, honey, there's no way in the world uh, that I would ever subject my daughter to the environment uh, that we thought was cool and we thought was okay when we was being raised up. 
It's no way that I would ever subject my daughter to the environment that y'all still think is cool and this culture in which we embrace and in which I think that is overwhelmingly celebrated as trash. Up at this hour, as we mentioned, we have a reporter on the scene, but there are some security <laughs> concerns. Fox 32's Nate Rogers is on Michigan Avenue in a protective position. Nate, can you tell us what you see right now? Yeah, that's right, Dane. Um, um, as you just mentioned, we're downtown on Michigan and Randolph. Um, I'm actually probably a block away from a lot of where the chaos has originated. Right now, Chicago police are trying to clear Michigan Avenue, at least from um, Randolph. Notice how they send the black people in there in order to report effectively because if you're a white man and you got on some reporter gear and you got a cameraman with you, you are meat you are toast they coming for you they will have your neck if you a white man and you walking around thinking that it's sweet out there trying to report on the news no they got to send in their toughest reporters they sent the black woman in and they sent that they sent that black man in and he better not have no airpod maxes in he, he better have some airpod regular airpods in that boy until maybe three or four blocks south on Michigan. Um, very active scene indeed. Hundreds of officers working this investigation. Um, there are reports unconfirmed by Chicago police of multiple people shot at Michigan and Washington, also Michigan and Wabash. The Chicago Fire Department, we're told, um, is here along. Multiple people shot. Now, in any other community, if multiple people get shot by one person that don't look, that's not black, they call that a mass shooting. Let's be real. Let's be real. In any other community, if multiple people get shot, they call that a mass shooting. That is a mass murderer that is going to be arrested, put on trial, and they're going to have a whole news report about it. In our communities, because we don't have any standards, that's just normal. It's normal for you to hear sirens outside of your window. It's normal for you to hear gunshots in the air. It's normal. It's, it's normal for kids to run through the street, amok, tear up the stores, burn down their buildings, almost get hit by a car, don't have no kind of parents nowhere to then control them or whatever like that. This is normal. We don't have any standards anymore. This is normal with paramedics and Chicago SWAT teams all assisting in this investigation. Now, the chaos here downtown began or erupted just before 8 p.m. Several hundred young people traveling in groups, kids seen jumping barricades into Millennium Park, also jumping on top of cars. Other reports indicated large Look at groups that. trying to force their way into the Art Institute. This appears to be one of those teen takeovers um, that we saw last year publicized widely on social media attracting thousands into the downtown area as well as to Chicago area beaches the teens are seen with their cell phones out um, Bluetooth music speakers blasting dancing while recording videos hoping that they'll go viral now I'm back out here live really just within the last 10 minutes or so ago um, my photographer and I Raphael we heard at least four gunshots now you know Raphael you know Raphael is feeling some type of way about you uh, subjecting him to this nonsense. We were standing at Michigan and Washington. We ran um, along with another TV news crew just to get to safety. Maybe five minutes after that, we heard even more gunshots. And so right now, Chicago police are trying to clear this area. If you um, can see from where I'm standing right now, gridlock traffic indeed. I mean, um, Chicago police here in great numbers along with the Chicago Fire Department. Let me show y'all another video real quick. And it's funny because my wife said, uh, she said, Anton, uh, you ever want to go and visit Chicago? I said, nope. We're going to go the other way. We're going to go to Pittsburgh. We're going to Pittsburgh. We're not going to Chicago. No more Chicago for us. Check this out. Now look at this narrative. Completely different or same report, 
But now we have some additional context in this, all right? The action pouring in tonight after a violent weekend of shootings and fights involving large groups of teenagers here in Chicago. Last night, hundreds of young people descended on Michigan Avenue, smashing car windows and trying to get into Millennium Park. And Friday night, another large group brawled at the 31st Street Beach. Friday night, another large group brawled at the 30, 30-something Street Beach. This is in the daytime. It ain't even just happening at night. Well, watch this. Stick with me real quick. Setting a car on fire. Tonight, both the mayor and mayor-elect are weighing in on the team takeovers, calling them... Both the mayor, Lori Lightfoot, and the mayor-elect. So this is the person that's going to replace Lori Lightfoot. All right? Rock out with us, y'all. Rock out with us. <laughs> Unacceptable. This was the scene at Michigan and Washington last evening. Police making 15 arrests during a massive disturbance in the area of Millennium Park. A 16 and 17 year old were shot as others jumped on cars smashing windows. This woman and her husband were attacked in their cars. They waited for a light to change. The guys are jumping in my car. My husband go to the hospital. What did they do? Because the guys I put in their face. So you're telling me these monsters are literally just punching random people in their face, beat up her husband, jumped in. Listen, listen, listen. This is terrorism. This is terrorism. Because this is what they want us to stay on code for. A bunch of teens jumped. Boy, everybody would have been shot in that car. I'm letting all of the, I'm letting everything fly. Come and pick your kid up, not from the jail cell. Come and pick your kid up from the morgue. Come and pick your kid up from the morgue. Everybody dying in that car. And no, he was not a good child. Fuck your fish fry. Fuck your GoFundMe. Everybody getting killed in that car. Everybody that ever balled up a fist is going down. What the fuck are we talking about, y'all? Why are people jumping in the car and punching random people in the face? Why do you feel comfortable enough to do that? Where's your home training? And on Friday night, a 14-year-old boy was shot near the 31st Street Beach after fights broke out among a large crowd of teens. In a statement, incoming Mayor Brandon Johnson said, it is unacceptable and has no place in our city. However, it is not constructive to demonize youth who've otherwise been starved of opportunities in their own communities. That's the part I wanted to play. That's the part I wanted to play. This is why I will never, ever align myself with somebody based off of the color of their skin. Character matters. Loyalty. How it is that you move when nobody is looking at you, around you. The ma Listen, you're getting the same thing that you just got rid of in Lori Lightfoot. The same thing. Thing. It, look, it is not constructive to demonize youth who was beating the fuck out of. I'm gonna add this next part. Who's beating, jumping in cars, tearing up shit, and beating the fuck out of innocent people that ain't got nothing to do with nothing is not constructive to demonize youth who otherwise would have been starved of opportunities in their own communities. These monsters, these demons, the ones he said don't demonize, these demons from spawns from hell themselves, hell being the women and the men that fathered them, that don't give a fuck about them, these demons, right? I don't even feel safe wearing my Rolex anymore. 
I got to put on my Apple Watch. I don't know if I feel safe wearing an Apple Watch Ultra. These demons, right? At 11, 12, 13, 14, historically, you were old enough to go off to war. You were old enough to defend your household. You are old enough to take the life of another person. These monsters are going to grow up and be the face of your community. They're going to be trying to talk to your daughters and sons saying, hey, beautiful. And she's going to say, oh, no, thank you. And they're going to say, well, fuck you then, bitch. They're going to be following your children. Y'all sitting here arguing that there should be more of them so that we can make sure that uh, Planned Parenthood goes away. This is wild. This is absolutely, positively, the wildest times that we've ever lived in. And the more that I see and y'all send me as far as the stuff that's happening in our communities, the more I'm convinced that I was absolutely right in my youth and that it was best for me only to have one child and then the consideration of taking my child out of regular schools and homeschooling her and then moving all the way across the world and I can live stream from anywhere I want to uh, is probably the best solution for my family and I because everything is going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, anybody can be able to say whatever it is that they want to say. Jacquel PF says her face. Her face says, "I'm told. I'm finally facing accountability." Uh, Mimi, Mimi selfie, Mimi selfie says, "Is the venue close to the airport?" I'm asking based on my hotel choice and if I need a rental. I am going to update it. Uh, this afternoon slash tomorrow morning inside of the Patreon as far as the location. I don't want the Pookies and the Ray Rays and uh, the people with bad kids in Chicago trying to show up at our event, big dog. Uh, Mr. Maximus says, Lizzo says she is the beauty standard. When? Send me that. Send me that video. I'm interested in seeing what that video is. <laughs> Send me that video. Jo we needed John Wick in Chicago. 80% of those kids, he said what? All right, I'm going to check. We're going to review that tomorrow. John Wick says 80% of those kids have no father. Their mothers uh, all compete in the Victim Olympics. They be winning gold medals. <laughs> Canigula. I like that name. Canigula. The monolith got some branches to prune. Ray, Roy Rainbow is in the building, says, building a tribe, leaves single moms alone. David L. is what up, though, says, Anton, this is what baby, baby boomers we're doing in NY in the late 80s, Central Park 5. The generations before us failed and never righted their wrongs. I agree. I agree. Listen. <sighs> Let me get this shit off my screen. Shout out to David L. Thank you for the fireball. Thank you to everybody that contributed into the platform. My message to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Remove yourself from the environments that you do not deem necessary. Divest like they're trying to leave and divest with a bunch of guys that really don't even want them. That's just going to fuck on them and leave them for the streets. Divest yourself and walk away from the communities of people that think that you're supposed to align with them just based off of the color of your skin. There are some people that you need to leave behind. There's some family members that you need to walk away from. There's some friends that you've had in your life, your entire life, and they're not actually doing anything or adding any value into your life. There's some channels that you need to unsubscribe to that is a part of your algorithm, and you need to clean up by deleting, removing, and clearing the cache on your computer, and then going through the people that you subscribe to and saying, yo, I no longer want this type of content to be generated on my YouTube platform because it's toxic. I feel like I need to go and take another shower after I do certain live streams because I just feel like the filth need to be washed from over me 
because there's spirits and principalities and the things that we take in on a regular basis. When you listen to certain music, it can change your mood. When you take in certain content on a regular basis, it can then normalize things that's traumatic in your life, right? We're overwhelmed with the majority of bad content that programs us to do the wrong things. We see stuff now that you are supposed to be traumatized over or you supposed to jump out of your seat for and we don't even blink no more. It's just normal. It's just normal. It's not even a thing anymore. We don't flip out. We don't trip. We not flinching. We see a chick call a chick a bitch on the street, her best friend a bitch on the street, and that's just normal. White people are scared to walk across the street because they don't want, to, want you to know that they're trying to get away from you because they know that you're going to start targeting them the minute that they walk across the street because they don't want to be associated with the foolishness. And we sitting here talking about be on code. For what? We watch, we watching everything in real time, including the freak Nick hole fallout. Old holes been old holes since holes been hoeing. Bars. Bars. Time dog in the building, so on top of my game. I'm coming in through the ceiling. Yeah. Y'all know that Time Dog didn't have bars for a long time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We are infected. We have generational curses that we're unable to break away from because we see this as our norm. This is not your culture. This is not what your grandmother had in, envisioned for you as she was uh, planning out what her family was supposed to be. This is not what your grandfather and the people uh, that fought as a part of the civil rights movement fought and died for. This is not what the Freedom Riders was getting their buses torched over. This is not the thing that your ancestors was trying to rescue you from as far as getting you past and, and, and people moving up north in order to get the jobs that was afforded to them and provided from them in order for them to be able to raise their families out of poverty. This is very much the thing that people are running away from once they get over here to the United States of America and they say, you know what? I don't really, I'm not really sure that this is the American dream. We're trying to run away from it. Think about it for a minute. We have the youth determining what happens within the culture. We have the things that we celebrate the most and we champion it even though it's the worst for us. Uh, we have indoctrination camps. We have people unable to make the best decision for themselves, they continue to make the bad decisions financially. They make bad decisions sexually. They make bad decisions. And and they'll turn around and say, well, Anton, you the bad guy because who the fuck is you to have something to say? And you've been married for almost 20 years. Who, is, who the fuck is you to give us some advice on how it is that our kids are supposed to act? And you made the best decisions as far as how it is that you're raising your kids. You don't know what it's like to be divorced. Isn't that the very thing that we're supposed to be taking advice from? Nope. We don't want advice from that. We don't want people that's actually a reflection of the community of how we supposed to be. We don't be we don't want to actually help our kids become better versions of ourselves. We're creating demons, spawns from Satan. We're indoctrinating them, we're teaching them to be monsters. We allow them to do whatever it is that they want to do and then you know what we do? We hold everybody else accountable for not doing a thing that's in your best interest and you're not even saving yourself. You won't cut your grass. You think that every wrong thing is right and you will argue me down 24 hours a day, seven days a week as to why we need to be on government assistance. You sitting here fighting for reparations and you can't even clean up your own lawn. No matter where you listen, I heard that Houston's population rate is actually dropping. You know, that's where all the black people are running to. Right. Here's the converse. Uh, the, the, the other side of that conversation, though, right. The additional context. More black people are flooding into Houston, but more people are leaving Houston. So then if you compare the two statistics, then that would lead you to the conclusion that the people that's actually good for the community in Houston is running away from it. And the people that's the worst for it are moving in. Every single city that you go into, you tear it up. And then you say, oh, I don't want to come here. I want to go there. Walmart don't even want to open up another store in your community. They said, I don't care how much it's a potential 
a bag to be waiting over here. I'm not opening up nothing. I'm not opening up. They need metal detectors just to go in the valve mat now, to go into Walmart. It's insane, man. It's absolutely insane. And then I'm the bad guy because I call it out, and you say, like, white people don't have social media or the news. Well, Anton, you're putting it on display for everybody to see. Well, good. Bring back shaming. Bring back shaming. Bring back holding people accountable. Bring back taking people to jail. Throw away the key. Throw away the key. Lock me up. Throw away the key. Bring back sitting the most egregious people on the back of the bus. On the back of the bus. It's people, and it, you know, I, honestly, I feel sorry for, um, I honestly feel sorry for the people that's in the middle class because I'm blessed enough to be able to escape uh, certain environments to where I no longer have to subject myself or my family to anything that's going on here. I feel sorry for the good people, the good people that actually have to endure through this nonsense because they don't have the capacity to just be able to up and move when they want to. It's some good people in Chicago. It's some good people in Detroit. It's some good people in St. Louis. It's some good people all across this country and they can't get out of their circumstances because they're heavily influenced by and being held accountable by the people that's forcing them to stay on code for the things that's the worst for them. And those are the people that I pray for. I don't pray for you. I don't pray for you that do the things that you should have been arrested for the last 10 times that you got away for, from it or away with it. And because you didn't get arrested and because you can't stop doing it, you're going to get a, you're going to get arrested on the 11th time. And then you're going to have free Ray Ray on a T-shirt. I don't pray for you. I almost, and I'm always, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I got to hold myself accountable and bring myself to the front of the congregation. I almost, uh, a couple weeks ago, wished death on somebody. I almost wished death on somebody. And then I had to ask God for forgiveness. Because I didn't want to turn into the thing that I hated the most, that I despised the most about our culture. I don't want to turn into that monster. That's the thing that we fought all our lives to get away from when we was trying to get out the hood. Every real dude I know never wanted to stay in the hood. His goal was to get up out of the hood. We didn't want to immerse ourselves in the things that was worse for us. We wanted to get our kids a better opportunity than we had. But if you stick around long enough, and let this be a lesson, if you stick around long enough in environments that's not, not conducive for you, eventually you'll turn into the very thing that you hate. Thank God that God is on my side and there's people around me to hold me accountable and pull me out of that dark space so that I can then continue to do what it is that I'm supposed to do, and that's my father's work. If you stick around long enough, and you got 10 friends and all of them is fucked up and you actually had a good spirit when you first met them, eventually your heart will turn black and you'll be just like them. Hear what I'm saying. Eventually your heart will turn black and you'll be just like them. So I don't take in this bullshit no more. I don't give a fuck what no reaction videos is doing. I don't even see it. I don't see none of this shit. The only time that I see it is when it's time for me to address it online because I need to call out the hypocrisy and I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to do my father's work and I'm going to bring my bag chasers and the people that's trying to go in the direction that I'm going in with me. We're going to all get there. We're going to get to the promised land. We're not going to be like Moses and Aaron. We're not going to have the majority of us is not going to have to die off before we get to the land of milk and honey. We all go into the promised land. But the first thing that we got to do is cut off the people that's actually holding us back from getting there. No weak links. No more weak links. The weak link is going to drown us all. All right. Let me read these super chats. Um, Roy Rainbow says, I'm learning. We still up. Let's be clear. Shout out to Roy Rainbow. 
Enos Luby says, you got a nice sun glare across the screen. I know. I don't want to um, lower the shades because I got the background over there. You can see it. See all of that sun? It's beautiful out here in these streets. I don't want to lower it because uh, God is loving on us. And we don't have to subject ourselves to what's going on in these streets. Shout out to Enos Luby. Uh, I want that sun glare. I'm leaving that up on purpose. Uh, CN Woke says, you are a blessed and highly favored man. Your family is privileged to have you as their head. Shout out to CN Woke. Aaron says, Chicago is still the best city in the world, according to Forbes. <laughs> they couldn't even get past the... Uh, who did they just lose to in the play-in, in the playoffs? They just got washed the other day. Uh, they beat Toronto. I don't even remember. Anyways, neither here nor there. And Roy Rainbow says, don't with, wish death, wish success. Most people can't uh, can't handle success. I agree. You got to pray for your enemies. Um, but that's why I said I had to bring myself to the front of the congregation because uh, I know it wasn't right. And I had to ask God for forgiveness. I almost wished it, but I had to ask God for forgiveness for even thinking a thought. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Um, I love you guys. Shout out to Whoopi, Whoopi Rock One. Whoopi Rock One says, preach Anton. God bless the real. God bless the real. Listen, uh, send me the articles and the stuff that y'all see in the streets because I'm not going to see it based off of my own algorithm. Uh, send me the different things that you guys would love for me to react to, AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com, and I'll check it out. Um, and hopefully you guys continue to have a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal week. Uh, it's been awesome for me. Bag Chasers is up. Uh, also, on top of that, make sure you guys subscribe to the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, shout out to Jaquel uh, PF. Jaquel PF says, we don't have to pray anymore. We move on things because we already have the victory, brother. I love you, my brother, in real life. Uh, light chasers. I like that. Light chasers. That's dope. Thank you for the fireball. I need y'all to do me one more favor before we get up out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate you. You guys are absolutely the best group of bag chasers that I've ever had in my entire life. Shout out to Ronaldo. Alberti says, keep the third one-third mentality AD. Let the two-thirds continue to do what they do. The Lord is separating his people. You got wings for a reason. That's the best way to end the show right there. Shout out to Ronaldo. I love y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Peace.